The scripture reading for today is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. If you feel led, please stand. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in, pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me, that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Here ends the reading. I'd like to welcome our radio audience and those uh, watching on the, the website with the, the video. Welcome to our, our service of worship. I, I love what Paul did with the uh, armor of God of getting all suited up for, uh, as a warrior and then falling on your knees. That's kind of backwards to what we would expect. If you're going to be uh, all set and ready for battle, you'd think you'd want to get out there and do something. but. Of course, the scripture opens up with our, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but it's a spiritual battle. It's a battle that we're all a part of, and whether we like it or not, are involved in because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, evil does not want to hear the good news of the gospel, the good news of God's forgiveness in Jesus. But we're involved in it, and it helps us as we read through this passage to keep the big picture in mind. That in all the things that we do, we're to be strong in the Lord and we're to be operating in His might as we apply the gifts and the talents and the abilities that He's given us. We are to be strong in Him and in His power. For the battle ultimately is His and He is the victor and the conqueror who allows us, as Paul says in Romans 8, to be more than conquerors in all that life throws against us. But prayer warriors is an apt description. As uh, we talked about this uh, uh, four, or four or so years ago when there was a, a misprint on our prayer chain and it said something calling on all of our prayer warriors. And so that led me to, to preach on this very subject called prayer warriors. So you've heard some of this stuff before and for many of you this is not new. Uh, but I must admit, I didn't hear about this scripture until I was in college at a prayer group. So uh, we're going to run through some of the things that many of you may have already heard, but I think we'll apply it in a, a way that will be fresh. Prayer warriors. I don't often think we think of ourselves as being in battle when we pray. We may be wrestling with our own uh, feelings of whatever they are and our own emotions for the present situation that we're hurting and so we go to God in prayer. Uh, we're struggling with a relationship so we go to God in prayer. But to think in terms of praying as a, a battle in the larger picture of God's uh, movement and salvation in the world 
is, is a whole different kind of picture. We wrestle against sinful desires in our own selves. We do wrestle with those and to be in prayer for our own keeping on top of the carnal nature and walking in the new creation is important. We, we wrestle against unjust and oppressive systems. We do talk about those uh, systems that are at work in the world today. Uh, the Bonhoeffer study and the adult study is going through how Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrestled with that in Nazi Germany and trying to get in touch with the Allies to say, you know, not everybody here in Germany is on board with this. Please work with those of us that aren't in agreement with this oppressive system, this unjust system, this evil system. So we, we have those real struggles in life that are also a part of the spiritual struggle. And we wrestle against the uh, actual spiritual evil. And sometimes we are called upon to cast out evil spirits and to resist as uh, spiritual dimensions in our life. I just saw on God Tube the other day that Stephen uh, Curtis Chapman has a new song out. It's uh, part of the, the War Room movie soundtrack and it's just entitled Warriors. And he virtually said what Paul was saying in the children's time. I didn't catch all the lyrics, but it, uh, part of it was something like this. I fall on my knees and fight like a warrior. I am a warrior on my knees. The enemy trembles every time. He knows the battle is no longer mine. I call on the name of the one who is the conqueror. Calling on the name of Jesus, there's power in the name of Jesus. As Paul, in prison, writing this, sees Roman soldiers guarding him, perhaps even chained to him, he sees their armor and uses that image in this passage. A typical Roman soldier would have had a, a, a belt here. His sword would have been hanging from the belt. And Paul goes on to talk about it. That, that's your core strength. It's like the belt of truth. You have to have truth to, to gird your loins, to give you that stability. Dancers talk about it as uh, strengthening their core. Athletes talk about having this, this core strength, this inner body strength that just kind of helps you do other things. For a dancer, that inner, that core strength helps you stretch out and get the extension that you want to have. Athletes of making those, those great catches or those great rebounds or doing all those things that, that inner core allows you to do so much more. You don't necessarily see it, but it's something you feel. Dancers also talk about your center, your awareness and your orientation in space. Truth is at the very core of who we are. We have to have God's truth at work in us in order for us to be able to have any orientation in in society, in life, we need God's truth more and more. And that's what Paul tells us. This is your core. Without it, everything is adrift. Everything is relative without God's truth. Got to start there. And the breastplate of righteousness. It's our relationship with Jesus who has reconciled us to God. God has reconciled us to him in Christ. He's washed away our sins. It's our, his righteousness is our righteousness. In Him, in Jesus, we have right standing, right relationship with God. And that is so essential because it isn't that we have created this, uh, this impregnable shield by our own strength and our own efforts and all the, the good deeds that we've tallied up and so now we're okay to fight evil. No, really, we would fall and fail if we relied on our own strength. That's why he starts out, you know, it's in his strength, it's in his might that we have this victory. And in a society today, as I think about the political arena, uh, where, man, once you get in, in the ring, everybody's looking in your past and trying to find things that they can uh, somehow cut you down with, and, uh, and it just doesn't matter who you are. And Barclay, in his commentary on this, uh, shares a quote. He says, words are no defense against accusations but a good life is. And that's just a great way to say, you know, if, if uh, wherever you are and people are speaking against you and trying to discredit you and whatever it is, 
whatever you say isn't going to make that much difference, though it it's, can be important, but he said the best is a good life. In us, it isn't even that we have made ourselves good people, it's that Christ has died for us and made us sons and daughters of God. So that breastplate of righteousness, that knowledge that we are saved by Jesus and He is our righteousness, allows us even in our shortcomings and our failings and our sinning to continue the battle. Because we're not trusting on our goodness, we're trusting on the goodness of Jesus Christ applied to us. That's a gift. Otherwise we'd just get cut down. Somebody would say, yeah, well you did this. Well, you'd stop you right there. But you can go say, yeah, you know, I did fail there, but Jesus is my Savior, and I'm still telling you the truth. Oh, it's a great, God has done this so well. Sandals, for the readiness to share the gospel, the gospel of peace. Uh, your shoes are on. You're ready to go. They're not in the closet, you know, or someplace else, or lost under the sofa, or just, you know, the shoes are on your feet, you're ready to go. And I think one of the failings that we as, uh, a church has, as Christian community in general, we, we're, we don't make ourselves available. Or we put our shoes on, but we're relaxing in our Barker lounger and whatever, and you know, we're just waiting for God to call us and uh, come do something. It's, so in one sense, we're, the shoes are on and we're ready to go, but we're not really making ourselves available. And Bruce Wilkerson, in one of his books, uh, You Were Born for This, shares, you, you need to be ready to go. You need to be more than available. You need to be asking to be put into the game, asking for an assignment. Um, Tim Dwight used to do that with Kirk Ferentz. I think he used to drive him nuts. You see some of those video clips where they're on the sidelines, and Tim Dwight's over there talking to Kirk. You know, it's like, put me in, put me in. If I can do this, you know, just kind of coming up with creative ways to do this. Yeah, but that's great. Put yourself, ask to be in the game. The Lord will give you assignments. Man, the Lord gets somebody like that. It's like, okay, <laughs> I got one for you. Come on over here. Helmet of salvation, again, knowing that you're saved. It's by grace through faith. Not because of works. It's more than an event, though it is that, of salvation. You may know exactly when it happened or you may have just grown up and some time in your life you hear yourself acknowledging Jesus and you go, okay. However the Lord's done it with you, it's, it's more than that event. It's a, it's a standing, it's a condition of grace. Uh, it's a, a knowing who your commander is. It's a knowing which side you're on. It's a, a way of life, a walking in faith. It's more than a thing that you have gotten by God's grace, a gift of eternal life. It's you walking with Him and sharing that and living it. And that's protection for you in your life as you battle evil. Because again, it's by God's grace. And when you fail, that grace is still there for you. God's love is still there for you. And the sword of the Spirit, it's the Word of God. We, we need to have knowledge of the Bible. We need to learn it. We need to uh, keep it in our heart, to memorize parts of it. Uh, I've got some nieces that are memorizing chapters of it. Uh, they're just amazing. We battle using the Bible. We don't use it as something to beat somebody over the head with. But we have to know what Jesus used it when Jesus was being tempted by the devil. It was a scriptural battle. And Jesus came back all the time resisting temptation with quoting scripture, uh, appropriately quoting scripture. Jesus embodied it, and Jesus is that word of God. It's a great package deal. Well, all of this is for battle. All of it's not just so that we can sit back and say, whew, man, okay, I've got the Christian life now. All of it's for action, it's for battle, and it's for prayers. As Paul said, okay, you're equipped, now fall on your knees. And be, as Stephen Curtis Chaplin said, Chapman said, a warrior on my knees. But get in the battle. <laughs> the, uh, Mr. McGaffin, the football coach over Winterset, uh, 
a story was shared at his funeral one time that uh, he went up to a, a guy, you have to understand Mr. McGaffin, he was one of those real coaches like Paul Bear Bryant, you know, kind of the, the gruff, the kind of guy. And he went over to one of his players sitting on beds, this is a high school, and he said, I forget the guy's name, he said, you feeling okay? And the player goes, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Really, are you sure, are you all right? And the player goes, well, no, really, I'm doing all right. And Mr. McGaffin says, you're darn right, you feel right because you haven't been doing anything. Now get in there and hit somebody. <laughs> so, well, that was Mr. McGaffin. <laughs> but he said, yeah, get in the fight. Get in the battle. It's one thing to have it kind of all together and have this nice Christian life thing. That's not what God's after. He wants you in to where you're stretched and where you, it's going to be a battle. In the stairwell, one of the stairwells at Mercy North is a sign that says, don't find time to exercise, make time to exercise. Don't hope that you'll have some time in your day to pray. Set some time aside. Carve out some time. Make sure you get time. Because this is not about doing the prayer thing. It's about connecting with God. It's about being checking in for command for your assignment for the day, reporting for duty. Otherwise, you'd just be doing good stuff, which God may or may not be directing you to do. Make time for prayer. We're going to have a prayer service here September 27th. Uh, you'll be watching for that. We're just going to come and worship and pray and bring, we're, just, we're going to do that. We'll let the Holy Spirit lead us in that. Because how you pray can happen a lot of different ways. One of the songs we just sang um, talked about all different kinds of prayer. And the scripture talks about using pray in all kinds of ways. It's not so much about doing a, a rote thing, though you can do it lots of different ways, but I, I just want to share with you an experience. Uh, I've shared part of the story, and I get to share the rest of the story, at least as far as I'm concerned. Leroy Stutz was a, a friend of Susan's brother Tom, he just passed away and we went down and this came out of the, uh, the funeral. Uh, they were both in the uh, Air Force Academy together and they both were sent to Vietnam pretty close at the same time. Both were pilots and uh, Leroy got shot down and was a part of the Hanoi Hilton crew for seven years. He was listed for five as missing in action and then they knew that he was alive and was in the Hanoi Hilton for two more years. Well, when he, a great friend of uh, Susan's brother Tom, um, since the academy days on, and they both flew. Tom came back from Vietnam, and, uh, but Leroy was still missing. Susan's mom took it upon herself to pray for Leroy every day until they found out something. So it ended up being every day for seven years. And she got other people to, to pray with her at her church and other places. But I, we know that she did that for seven years. No answer. Five of it with nobody knowing where he was. And we know because Leroy came back in 73. And uh, but she prayed for him all those years. I got to meet Leroy, and it's striking how much meeting him means to me because he's been an example of how to do prayer that I've preached in sermons everywhere I've been since I found out about this because Susan's mother just kept praying and just kept praying and never got an answer, never knew anything, but she kept praying for him. And I got to meet the guy. Well, that, that was cool enough to meet him and hear him share some of his stories. But then at the re reception after the funeral, we're at the house and Lori comes up to me and said, hey, come on over here. And he, people are in the dining room, we're kind of in the living room, but people are just like right there and having conversation and he begins to share with me something that he's held with him ever since his days as a prisoner. And I won't go into the details of what happened but he, he felt guilty that he might have caused one of his fellow um, 
POWs a beating. And it wasn't, it wasn't like that, but he felt guilty about it. And right there, while people are over here at the dining table talking and sharing different things, Leroy is over here with me having this discussion about what happened at the Hanoi Hilton and something that he's carried with him all of these years since the 60s that still bothered him. And so right there, I don't know that, I wasn't paying attention to if anybody else was noticing, but I put my hand on his shoulder and was able to pray for him and to ad administer, to use that word, forgiveness through Jesus Christ for him right there and to assure him. And right there, with everybody, everything else going on, he received healing that you could just see it happening. And uh, I had to go in the bathroom and cry <laughs> when it was over because it's such a privilege for me to see that I get to meet this guy that I've been talking about all these years and he's right there and he's asking me through Jesus to heal him in prayer. Right there. Well, everybody else is going on about their stuff. <laughs> so it's just like there was this, just the two of us right there and everything else just going. And maybe if they looked over, they saw that we were praying or something. But nobody asked, hey, what's going on, guys, or anything like that. But I, I, I was so touched because I got to bring the healing of God to him right there in public. And it just was so natural and so normal. But I, I just had to go in the bathroom and cry for a little bit. Susan's mom, seven years of praying. I get to be on the other end, seven minutes <laughs> of praying for him. I got to see the results. She had to wait seven years to see what she was praying for. God can do it any way God wants to. What we do is get in the game, throw ourselves in there, be prayer warriors. Let's pray together. Lord, you are so good. You know, you know us, you know how to work with us, and you are just waiting to do great things in and through us. Lord, thank you for forgiving us when we fall short. And thank you for not disqualifying us for getting in the game when we have failed. Lord, take all those, those shortcomings and failures and use them to build up our faith and help us take the next steps as we live for you in this world. whether it be things on a, a global level or things in our homes. Lord, you know how, how to help us wrestle with them and how to help us be people through whom you can move and act. So in that wonderful combination of our throwing ourselves in there and you providing power, help us do amazing things, Lord. Meet our needs personally, Help us in all of our relationships. Help us as a church to be ready to move however you want us to move. That the gospel of peace for the goodness of he heaven will be evident in this community, in this world. Thank you, Lord, for being so good. Thank you for never giving up on us. Thank you for doing miraculous things, even through us. Help us be your warriors, your witnesses, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You'd stand for the closing prayer. May the God of all grace and mercy who blesses you with his love, his faithfulness, his patience, 
stir up within you his holy fire that you will be a people of strength and courage and be strong in him as you share the good news of Jesus with those around you. May his peace be upon you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.